Welcome to Figma Bytes, the video series that aims to teach you to speed up your Figma workflow. Today, we're taking a bite out of the new Figma UI. The design for UI 3 was fairly controversial at first, but with the rollback to fixed panels, things seem to have settled down. Here's what changed. Let's start in the upper left. The first thing you'll notice is the tools have all moved. The toolbar now lives in the bottom center of the window. This matches FigJam and Figma slides nicely. First, we have the Move tools. You can click the button or drop down to select what you need. The shortcuts for these are V for Move, H for Hand tool, and K for Scale. Next, the Frame tool. In this menu, you'll find F for adding frames and Shift S for sections. Then, all of the shapes and the Pen tool. After that, the Type tool. Select that with the shortcut T. Then Comments, which is C, and Actions, which is Command K. The Actions menu is also where you can find widgets and plugins. The last item in the toolbar is Dev Mode. You can either click the button or use the shortcut Shift D. Once Dev Mode is active, the toolbar narrows focused and has two new tools. You can measure things by pressing Shift M or add annotations with Shift A. The next part of the UI that changed is the file name location and the associated drop down menu. In the upper left, we see the file name. We can click it to rename the file. To the right of that is the drop down with version history, branches, and all the other actions from before. Below the title is a handy link to the project where the file lives. To the right of this area, there's a new Minimize UI button. Clicking that or using the shortcut Shift Backslash will minimize the panels. And guess what? Both panels can be resized now, but you can still only go so big or so small. The next batch of changes are more subtle and a few of them tripped me up for a bit. They all have to do with the right side panel. The first one that's really easy to miss is the ability to show labels for all the properties in the panel. I believe these are off by default, but you can turn them on or off right below the share button. With an element selected, click the zoom controls. You'll see a new menu item called property labels. Click it and all of our input areas now have labels. Which do you prefer? This next update took a minute to retrain muscle memory. When elements are selected, the upper right acts as a header and actions area. Depending on what is selected, different actions will appear on the right. The last thing is always an overflow menu for more options. Looking for constraints? With a child element selected, an icon appears next to the position properties. Clicking this little icon will toggle the constraints area. Auto layout no longer has its own section in the panel. In the upper right of the Layout section, there's a new Auto Layout icon button. Click that to toggle Auto Layout on and off. And you can always use the shortcut Shift A. What about absolute positioning inside an Auto Layout? Well, it's basically in the same spot as before, but now it's called Ignore Auto Layout. With a child of an Auto Layout selected, you'll find the icon in the upper right of the Position section. My biggest word of advice when it comes to UI changes, because we all know they happen, is to learn shortcuts, 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 shortcuts. The thing that tripped me up most in the UI 3 update were things that don't have shortcuts. And if you really hate UI 3, you can always click the question mark in the bottom right of the window and select go back to previous UI, but there's no telling how long that'll stick around. That's UI 3. I hope this Figma Byte helps you produce pixel perfection. Thanks for watching.